Hello everyone, this is a video that has been brewing, I suppose, for the past several weeks. And I guess I've just been trying to wait for the right moment to, to kind of speak about it in a way that makes sense. And, and in some ways it's nothing new, and it's touching upon stuff I've spoken about in previous videos and even you know, over the past couple of years. But, um, you know, for whatever reason... Uh, especially in this last month or so, um, right around the time when I was, I was in the last couple of weeks of finishing the the documentary, and I was just you know immersed immersed in all the editing and, and putting it together, and um, the eclipse was coming up, and so a lot of people were getting you know really really into analyzing the eclipse and taking that apart after it happened and, and trying to figure out where the sun, you know, what was actually blocking the sun. And of course, it's, it's just sparking the whole debate over the mechanics of, of the heavens and the celestial bodies again. And, you know, lots of d discussions and debates on that. At the same time, you've got uh, the magnetic flat earth kind of model that Steve Torrance, Mike Cavanaugh, and Dr. Zach put out which is just very intriguing and uh yeah just of course it it definitely lines up with a lot of the stuff i've been looking looking into for a while now with the the whole toroidal magnetic concept uh connecting to the heavens and, and all that and then at the same time you know i got people you know friends coming to me you know who i regard very highly and and getting very excited about uh, the Book of Enoch, I think it's chapter 77, and thinking that well, the whole the whole flat Earth map is laid out in Enoch, and you got to look into this. And uh, other people coming at me and <laughs> very aggressively, you know, rebuking me for promoting the the disc map. It's time to ditch the disc map. Why are you promoting the the psyop as a methyl equidistant map? The circle map is the the fake map, you know. So, all this stuff, right? And I'm just in the middle, <laughs> middle of trying to put together this stinking documentary. So the whole map, it's just the map question, you know, which, yeah, I've been looking into for two years now, and, and I'm as curious as anyone about so many things. But at the same time, this last month has really just kind of, I think, brought me back to a conviction uh, where, as interesting as all this stuff is, you know, I guess I should start off by saying, first and foremost, I do not endorse any map. So, you know, there's a lot of people that think if you're just, if you show any depiction of the flat earth that's remotely circular, uh, that you're promoting the circle map or that I'm saying, oh, this is what it looks like. No, I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. <sighs> so, okay, I do think, for the record, I do think that there's, good reason to to not just abandon the the idea that it could be circular in nature that doesn't mean that the, the edge is necessarily circular per se it could be square with you know the sun and moon and the heavens rotating in a, and i've talked about this a lot before that you know if the heavens are hyperdimensional and we are in the three-dimensional four-dimensional you know three-dimensional plus time existence of our you know from our perspective we're looking at things that you know is it something that you that is is even realistic to try and and map out and and figure out the mechanics of it so the whole map question is is just this just this ongoing thing where i'm not i'm not trying to say it's it's so you know, that it's a waste of time or that it's just, I'm not trying to rebuke anyone else for looking into it. I, I really um, appreciate so much of the work and the research that different people do. Um, but at the same time, when you start getting, you know, dogmatic about the map, especially when it's other, you know, when it's other like Christian flat earthers that are coming at me and, and they're getting all worked up because like, why are you, why are you promoting the, the circle map? And, you know, that's the, that's the decoy, and they're getting really worked up about, you know, getting away from the circle map, and it's got to have something to do with the 4D map. So, to speak a little bit on that for a second, uh, you know, the Pac-Man map, there's different versions of it. You've got the just the one that's sort of like a, it's basically like an infinite rectangle, or, you know, 
but then a lot of people also kind of recognize that that doesn't make sense. And a lot, the thing is that gets me is that in so many ways, the whole 40 thing is a way of just people look at the issues with the AE map. You know, they look at the especially in the southern hemisphere, whether it's the flights and the distances and or the observations of the sun and the moon and the stars. And so we got to solve these problems. Otherwise, you know, if we don't solve all these these discrepancies and come up with a working model, then, you know, Flat Earth will, will never get off the ground and we're never going to expose the globe lie, you know. So it's all about thinking that it's it's a, it's incumbent upon us to come up with the working model, right? That's just the holy grail to a lot of Flat Earthers is we got to find the model. we got to find the map. Anyways, um, so but I think, so yeah, there are those anomalies and those you know, those pesky things with the AE map that we're still, that we're all still looking into. We're aware of them. I've been aware of them since the very beginning. But at, at the same time, I think going to the square map or the the Pac-Man map, in some ways, it does it really, for, for all the problems that it seems to solve, I would say it just creates new problems or just kind of shifts them around. You're sort of just rearranging the furniture, so to speak. It's not necessarily making it any more... Yeah, I don't know if they realize that, because if, if you think in terms of distances in the southern hemisphere, then you're actually expanding them in the northern hemisphere, because everything's then square or rectilinear. So, you know, on a on a circular map, the, the longitude lines still do converge in the center on one part of the map. The question is, you know, what is it, what's really going on in the southern, or, you know, on the southern rim? But so with the square map, you're you're kind of skewing that on both sides. And then, and then uh, a lot of times I've heard this argument from people that say, well, you know, the Bible, especially coming from the Christian promoters of the, of the 4D map or whatever, you know, the Pac-Man idea is that, well, the, you know, the Bible says the four corners, you know, so a circular map doesn't have corners. So look here, we have a corners when in reality, I don't, and so I'm like, okay, you know, that's, I guess that's a, a, a valid objection or whatever, or to me, I don't. I don't see any contradiction there. You can have four corners. You you really can have four corners on a disc, uh, or the disc within the four corners outside of it. I mean, these those sort of depictions have been around for a long, long time. I even drew a picture when I was first looking into flat Earth that was kind of exploring the idea. You know, who knows? But so was so that's sort of the starting point, and they go, well, that's. That's unbiblical because it doesn't, you know, a disc doesn't have corners, and so then they come up with this. But in reality, there's no corners on this because you're just, you're blocked in between two infinite walls, you know, going in every direction, and there's no, there's no corners <laughs> at all because there's no walls that sort of come to a terminus point together. So uh, to me, it's just kind of, it's, it's just kind of silly. But speaking of corners uh, and and everything, there's also uh, you know this whole project here that's kind of in in some ways based off of the the idea of the 4D map and the Pac-Man model uh, and the work of, of channels like Free Energy and stuff. And this is getting kind of crazy because I mean I did a video I don't know how long how long ago maybe a year ago uh, talking about flat Earth. <laughs> Flat Earth, the final mystery school, just asking the question of this whole quest to try and, you know, figure out the map and figure out the model itself turning into, you know, the sort of esoteric labyrinth or this, this sort of seduction that is pulling people, is the Flat Earth map issue itself being used to pull people into um, New Age and occult beliefs and even then it, we were seeing it all over the place and most of you understand that you know the the new age the, the new age teachings and and the occult uh, you know and and mysticism and all that is all over the place in the fl in the flat earth just like it is in the broader truth movement and, and the conspiracy world and and everything so yeah that was however long ago and now i mean we're at the point where we're seeing, you know, you've got guys like De Devin Maggi, who, he, this, is, this video is from, like, today, actually, talking again about this whole idea of the Hyperborea, you know, where he's basically using 
presumably a circular flat earth you know approach and all these these old accounts of people going to the north pole and finding a you know basically like a, a paradise on the other side of the the arctic mountains and and all this and it, again it's it's hard to say like how uh, apparently he's serious in in terms of trying to get people to buy into this idea that if, if you can actually physically get to the North Pole on the Flat Earth map, then that is basically where the, you know, it's it's like Shangri-La. It's, it's where you're going to go and, and reverse the process of, of devolution and, and the lower physical state that we are. So spiritual evolution here again, apotheosis, you know, the whole transcension idea. Uh, is is being incorporated into the <laughs> flat Earth ideology, um, totally preaching, you know, this is New Age lies. These this is Luciferian, you know, deception at at its worst. And this is something that the more I continue on with with all this research and engage with people across the the spectrum of the flat Earth, you know, the more it's just the more I come across it the more this is far more important to me than debating over the mechanics in the map and trying to figure all that out. I mean, so speaking of like the four corners and, and new age and occultism, you got this map that is based off of the 40 map where they're, they're straight up basing their model on, you got the flower of life and uh, the, the tree of life, the Kabbalistic tree of life. Uh, you've got fractal geometry. It, at one point, they show the you know the Mandelbrot, <laughs> the Mandelbrot set. So it's like all they're they're using actual like sacred geometry, quote unquote, totally occult symbolism and concepts in in the quote unquote in the map itself. So you know it really begs the question: Are you using? All these esoteric sort of clues to try and figure out the map or is figuring out the map inadvertently becoming this this gateway for people to get absorbed into the new age pantheistic you know gnostic deceptions and i of course i definitely would say it's the latter um but i see this all over and so i suppose that's why it, it is frustrating when you know there are other other people who who are looking to flat earth from a biblical perspective but they they seem more focused on chasing the map than chasing the truth of you know who created this enclosed world that we're living in cuz that's ultimately far more important than the nature and scope of you know all the mechanics of of where we live cuz ultimately it really ultimately it just really brings us back to you know, the same pivotal questions that exist no matter what. Who who made us? Why are we here? What is the solution to, you know, the problem of the human condition? What is the solution to all the deception and all the oppression and all the horrible things going on with this con control system and everything else? Either the, you know... Either what the Bible says is true about who God is, who we are, what our problem is, and what what the answer is, or you know the the Eastern mysticism and the pantheism, the pantheistic monism, and the all the occult New Age shamanistic belief systems that are all basically variations of the same thing. They can't, you know, they are mutually ex exclusive truth claims. They are mutually exclusive concepts of who God is and who we are. They are mutually exclusive concepts of salvation. They are mutually exclusive. So one, they cannot both be true. The Bible is not just simply another embodiment of, of the same old quote unquote ancient truths. No, it stands alone. And so, yeah, this is just, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, it's great to talk about maps and models and, and, mechanics of the heavens and, and all these cosmological questions but really to me these are all just precursors they're all all they do is point to the really important questions i mean it comes down to the question of, of the gospel what you know what is your gospel 
What is your good news? What? Where's your hope? What about life after death? What about heaven and hell? What about eternity? What about, you know, the conclusion of all of human history? How's it going to end up? How's it going to conclude? Because the Bible talks about, you know, the judgment for all the horrible things that have gone on in all of history and also on our personal individual scale in our own life that we will all stand before the Most High. And that is not, <laughs> understandably, that's not an appealing thought to anyone. Certainly not me. Um, because of all the crazy, stupid, horrible things I've done in my life. But that's why the gospel of Jesus Christ is unlike anything else in the world. And there is so much disinformation and so much distortion and so much manipulation of the truth when it comes to who Jesus is and who God is and what he did at the cross and why it matters that he rose again and <laughs> that he's coming back. That's the real, that's the biggest conspiracy is against the gospel. It's not, yes, the the cosmology issue and, and hiding, you know, hiding the enclosed fixed earth. It's a, power, it's a part of it. It's part of the whole agenda. Hiding God, right? Why did, Why would they lie to hide God? Well, okay, so who's God? You know, is Are we all a part of God? Are we all emanations of God? Are we all evolving back towards Godhood? If you believe that, then what difference does it make to reject the Copernican universe and to reject... You know Darwinian evolution and reject the mainstream version of it, but you're you're just believing the same thing and just in a slightly modified form. If you're still going to believe that we're all, you know, humanity is basically good and we're all we just got to get back to the ancient wisdom and religion is oppressive and all this stuff, all the stuff that's coming through the mainstream media, by the way. The mainstream is not promoting the Bible. It's not promoting repentance. It's not. Re it's not. You know, teaching people to to be convicted of their sin and turn away from their sin and believe on Jesus. Do you ever hear that in the mainstream media? Do you see that in the movies? Do you hear that in the news? No, you you don't. You hear the New Age gospel everywhere in all those places. Becoming becoming superhuman, using technology, using psychedelics doesn't matter whether it's you know the right hand path or the left hand path. It's just two sides of the same lying coin it's the hegelian dialectic it's the oldest trick in the book you know divide and conquer it's just different flavors of the same poison the poison is the the oldest lie that is in existence it goes back to the garden the serpent telling them that oh god's holding out on you god's god's keeping you from your full potential he knows that if you eat this, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like him, knowing good and evil. You'll be enlightened. You'll become godlike. It's the same thing. It has not changed in thousands and thousands of years. I mean, I have people coming to me like every day going like, well, uh, I, I, you know, I can't believe you still believe in that Bible. Like, don't you think they would have changed it? Can't you put it together that they've, uh, you know, They've wrote it for their own agenda, and they're just controlling. It's like, do you know what it says? Three chapters in. Do you know what the... I mean, it exposes the whole... The whole thing. The whole deception. is right there. Chapters 1 and 2 tell you what how God made everything, and then chapter 3 tells you how it all went wrong. And how it's still going wrong, because we're still believing that lie. All, in all kinds of ways and all kinds of forms and fashions and you know now we're just seeing the the chasing of the map the chasing of the model the chasing of the we can we can come together and pool our resources and figure out figuring out how they've hi hidden it how they've i mean and i'm not and again i'm not saying that there aren't that there's no point in Investigating these things and, and mapping them, but at some but at some point you got to be able to say there's a there's a limit to how much we're going to be able to figure out, right? Because if you don't at, at any point 
stop and remind yourself of that, then ultimately you're you're in the same philosophical position that the the materialistic heliocentric you know all the mainstream scientism figureheads are are constantly you know spouting where we can figure out the secrets of the universe and we're going to figure it out we're going to put it all into an equation we're going to become you know masters of our own you know our own fate I mean, that's what scientism preaches is that through knowledge and through learning and through you know, all these, you know, they're all about building models. You know what has struck me lately is that, you know, the Bible tells us lots of things about the nature of where we live that, you know, that it's revealed information. But it never actually tries to give us a map. God never tried to give us a map of like to paint a, a specific picture of this is what your world looks like. And he was, it's not, it's not like God wasn't capable of doing that. I mean, when we look at, when we think about the visions that he gave in terms of like, well, this is how you build the temple and this, this many cubits long, this many cubits high, this is, you're going to make this out of this, you know, it was very, very deep, very, very detailed. But when it comes to the earth and the heavens and the pillars under the earth and all these things, I mean, is it trying to map it all out for us? So we can, we look at the, we turn around and we look at the folly and we look at the hubris of so many generations that came before who are Christians that tried to merge the biblical revelation with the arrogance of the world, you know, with natural philosophy and the development of the scientific approach to, to knowledge in the world, which is ultimately based in a, you know, in occultism and humanism and all that. You know, they got sucked into that trap, but it's so just because you you step back from the Copernican system and, and outer space and it's it's enclosed, great, but you're still you can still be mirroring that same underlying mentality. So there is you know, there is there is a limit to how much we're gonna figure out, I think. I mean, especially like if you understand that when we're talking about the heavens, okay, now it's it's brought back into this more spiritual context right there's there's dimensions to it that are beyond our comprehension and it's not just static it's not just mechanical that the, okay that there's also seemingly the involvement of of conscious angelic beings who are par participate in this whole system you know so to to talk about modeling and trying to figure out the mechanics and and to try and break it all down scientifically it's at some point it gets to the it's almost to the stage of that old you know cliche debate about arguing over how many angels can fit on the head of a pin and they really did debate that hundreds of years ago and some i i don't remember what the story was but it was one of those synods where where all these theologians were i mean they were dead serious they were debating they got in this big huge heated heated debate over how many angels could fit on the head of a pin and at what point do we get into the danger of falling into that same trap, you know? Like, there's so many things in the Bible that I just do not under understand on a mechanical level. I don't know how Jesus walked on water. I don't know what the molecules of the of the the Sea of Galilee were actually doing to allow him to, you know what I mean? And I'm not trying to. I'm not. I'm not. Maybe one day we'll have that conversation, you know? But I'm... The important part about that story is what the f the fact that he was able to walk on water says about who he is, and what I need to do in response to that realization. And uh, so again, it's just that's it's what it, it it constantly comes back to. And there's so many people that just want to make it about, you know, flat earth. There's enough division. We need flat earth unity, or we need to be unified around a map. And it's like you need to know who the creator is. And what he has done, and what he is calling you to do. You, you need to be able to have discernment over the things that matter the absolute most. And a, and a physical map won't get you there. A friend of mine sent me this uh, the other day. I think he found this at like a thrift store or something. He likes thrift stores just like I do. Harper's Bible Dictionary. I don't know what year this was printed. But of course you had to look it up. So page 309... 
the firmament. The ancient Hebrews imagined the world as flat and round, covered by the great solid dome of the firmament, which was held up by the mountain pillars. Job 26 and 37. Above the firmament and under the earth was water, divided by God at creation. The upper waters were joined by the waters of the primord primordial deep during the flood. The rains were believed to fall through the windows in the firmament. The sun, moon, and stars moved across or were fixed to the firmament. Within the earth lay Sheol, the realm of the dead. I mean, it's just a silly little cartoon. We've all seen this picture, but I mean, yeah, I don't know when this book was written, but apparently it was written before they were too worried about, you know, trying to cover up the fact that, yeah, this is what the ancient Hebrews really did believe, the people who authored the Bible. But it's not a map, you know? It's the simplistic little, you know, it, it's just enough. <laughs> it's just enough. It's not in detail. There's no, we don't know what the pillars under the earth are attached to. Are they attached to anything? We don't know how big is the primordial. I mean, even if you were able to figure out exactly how big the firmament was and what the size of it and the shape and what it was made out of and how far across, you know, is it, is it a disc? Is it a square? I mean, there, there's still other questions beyond that that you could just get lost in. What is the primordial ocean? How do the windows in the firmament work? How do the portals that open and close to allow the winds of the earth to come? I mean, you, you know, it's like, you can, it never ends. The stuff goes on and on. So, again, this is not the map. You know, the answer doesn't lie here. It lies here. And at the end of the day, I mean, the gospel trumps everything. I just feel this... Uh, lately, I just feel this impending sense of... of urgency. You know, the time is getting short. The kingdom of darkness is getting ready to make its, you know, its final big play. And it's, you know, it's, it's the eternities of millions and millions of people that's at stake. And... And there's a, a time of testing that's coming upon us. You can have a map and still be lost. And nothing grieves me more than than seeing people who are lost. And they don't have to be. Because the truth is right in front of you. God is not hiding. You know, we talk about them hiding God. Well, we hide, we hide from God more than anything else is, what, is what's going on. We run from God. We turn away from God. We ignore God. He's not ignoring us. He's not hiding from you. He's right there. So I just... That's the only reason I think I'm still doing this. is because I see people finding God. And if there's even a chance that even one more person out there could find God. You know, it's, it's, then it's worth to keep going another day. So, anyways, thanks for listening to me babble on, but... <laughs> If you hear nothing else, know that God loves you. God knows you. He wants you to know Him. God is everywhere. You're never lost with God. You're never alone. He knows how everything works. The Bible says that the eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, nor the mind conceived of what God has prepared for those who love Him. So ultimately, trying to figure out how what what even we do, we can't even our brain we can't even conceive of everything that 
God even has made now, but is is making for the future. Because there is a new heaven and new earth coming. There is a new creation that is even yet to be revealed. The old is going to be wiped away. The heavens are going to be rolled up like a scroll and shaken, and the earth too. And it's it's going to be a, com- a complete reset. So yeah, getting stuck in all the mechanics and the model is it's like it's pointless in so many ways. What matters more than anything is that you, you open your heart to the one who who loves you and is chasing after you and gave his very life for you. You are precious to God. You're more precious to him than anything else in this creation, including all the, those magnificent angels that are up there. Think about that. You mean more to God than any of that stuff. You mean more to God than anything. Jesus never died to redeem a fallen angel. There's no, there's no redemption for the, for the fallen angels. It's kind of a sobering, harsh truth. But there's redemption for us. If only we just believe. God bless.